Ezekiel chapter 14 verse 7. New International Version. When any of the Israelites or any foreigner residing in Israel separate themselves from me and set up idols in their hearts and put a wicked stumbling block before their faces and then go to a prophet to inquire of me, I, the Lord Power, will answer them myself. Verse 8. I will set my face against them and make them an example and a byword. I will remove from my people. Then you will know that I am the Lord Power. Verse 9. And if the prophet is enticed to utter a prophecy... I, the Lord, have enticed that prophet, and I will stretch out mine hand against him and destroy him from among my people. I want to give all praise and honor and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim Yavashai, Bahashim Rekakwadash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles and faithful servants of Great Millstone who rule well, who teach this gospel and push this gospel to the four corners of the earth. Risking their lives and freedoms to do so, especially in these times. Peace and salutations to the hope elect of the house of Israel. Shalom. Now, on yesterday evening, um, I had posted a video uh, that dealt with a woman pastor. Okay, um, And uh, I will put the link to the video in the description box. Um, I wanted to do something additional with the video and bring out just a few other precepts uh, dealing with women pastors. Um, I encourage you to go and tune into that video and uh, catch the video as well as um, uh, discover the precepts that Yahweh Shemim Shah has sent to us, the commandments or instructions for women not preaching or teaching, okay? So I just wanted to add a few other precepts um, to that lesson. Um, again, I will state that lesson in the um, description box, okay? Um, now, so Yahweh Shem Yavashai, and, and the reason why I chose the New International Version is because of the scripture listed in Ezekiel 14 and 9, and it reads, And if the prophet is enticed to utter a prophecy. I, the Lord, have enticed that prophet, and I will stretch out mine hand against him and destroy him from among my people, Israel. Now, the key word that you see there is him. Okay, so we know according to the scriptures that a prophet is a man, not a woman, okay, but a man, okay, now, Let's study the word. We're going to study a few words in this scripture. And we're going to study the word entice. Let's reduce that. Um, enticed. Okay, now um, the strong concordance is going to pull the scripture from the King James Version. Okay. And that word here that is relevant to the word entice is prevail. Let's check it out right quick. The word prevail, it comes from the Hebrew. And it, let's hear it in the Hebrew. Strong's H6601. Patha. 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 Now, and it says, to open, roomy. Uh, to be, to be or make simple in a sinister way. Delude, allure, deceive, enlarge, entice, flatter, persuade, silly one. Okay, so this is a person that is not speaking according to the knowledge of the scriptures. Okay, this person is, is speaking from their own belly. They're speaking out of their own heart, okay? It is not according to Scripture. 
Now we went through a few scriptures on yesterday. Um, we'll go through them right quickly. Uh, let's go through those scriptures. Okay, First Corinthians fourteen thirty four. Right quick. Um, this is uh, 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 these scriptures are gone are, are spoken of and studied and spoken about in the last video, as I stated earlier. First Corinthians fourteen thirty four. Women should remain silent in the churches. They are not allowed to speak, but must be in submission, as the law says. Verse 35. If they want to inquire about something, they should ask their own husbands at home, for it is disgraceful for a woman to speak in the church. And the word church here means the congregation, the assembly, the garden, okay? So we're speaking of the children of Israel and the children of Israel only. Okay, and in that video that uh, I am referencing uh, in the description box, there is a Judite woman, a so-called Negro woman, that is a uh, so-called black woman, okay, that is speaking uh, to the tune of the fact that the Lord has put it on her heart to speak something, okay, to the children of Israel. This is incorrect. You see, the scripture says women are not permitted to speak in the church, which is the congregation, the assembly. Okay, now let's get one more scripture. First Timothy 2 and 9. Uh, somewhere on about that. I think it's probably the 12th verse. Let's get it first. And it says, um, Let's start at verse 8. Uh, Therefore I want the men everywhere to pray, lifting up holy hands without anger or disputing. Verse 9. I also want the women to dress modestly with decency and propriety, adorning themselves not with elaborate hairstyles or gold, or pearls or expensive clothes, but with good deeds appropriate for women who profess to worship our power. Verse 11. A woman should learn in quietness and full submission. Verse 12. I do not permit a woman to teach or to assume authority over man. She must be quiet. For Adam was first Slocky, for Adam was formed first, then Eve, and Adam was not the one deceived. It was the woman who was deceived and became a sinner, okay? But women shall be saved through childbearing if they continue in faith, love, and holiness with propriety, okay? So as you can see there, it was the woman that was deceived. Now, let's go back. We're going to return back to the King James Version. Let's go to Genesis chapter 3 right quick. Okay. Around the, maybe, I think it's around the 15th verse. So we'll read it to read down. Let's also change this to uh, King James Version. Because now we're going to show you how she was how she was deceived. Okay, now. Genesis chapter 3. Okay, now. Let's go all the way back up. Let's go back up. We're going to start at the fall of men. Genesis chapter 3 verse 1. Okay, here we are. Oh. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree in the garden? So Yahweh Hashem Shai had commanded Adam, then Eve, because he made Adam first, and then he said that Eve needs a helpmate. So Yahweh Hashem Shai created created the woman Eve from the loins coming up out of his coming out of his bloodline of Adam. Okay, we know that Adam means the first uh, physical man. Okay, now. Here we go. We're going to continue on. Don't want this to be long at all. Verse 2. And the woman said unto the serpent. 
In fact, let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 2. I don't want to just start in the middle of somewhere. I just want to look rather. Uh, okay, and here it is. Genesis chapter 2 is entitled The Creation of Man and Woman. Now let's go down for a second here. Give me just bear with me just a second. All right, we're going to start at verse 15. Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and keep it. Okay, now, <clears throat> let's continue. Verse 16. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Now, we know that tree in the Bible is a man. And garden represents the assembly, the congregation, the church, right? Okay, now, that is the hope elect of the house of Israel. Okay, all right, now, let's continue on. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. And freely eat is, is in reference to uh, the philosophies, the teachings, the knowledge of the truth. That is what it is in reference to because we know that um, Yahweh Shia tells us in John 4, 24, that God is a spirit. We must worship him in spirit and truth. And John 6, 63 tells us it is the spirit that quickeneth the word. It is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh profits nothing. So if the flesh is profiting nothing, and we know we're not talking about food that goes into our mouth. Okay. All right. Um, Luke 4 and 4 tells us man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Most High shall man live. Okay. Now, so we're talking about spiritual manner here. Okay. We're talking about the knowledge, truth, wisdom, and understanding of these scriptures. Okay. Which is going to transform you into the spirit realm. It's going to transform you into the spirit way of thinking, if you will. Now, let's continue. Verse 16, and the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for in that day that thou eatest thereof, you shall surely die. Now, what does this mean? But the, of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, so the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is who? I do me. The serpent. Okay, the serpent is a man, but it's a wicked man. Okay, all right. We know that the Idumeans were created to be the wicked, pursuant to Malachi 1 and 4, right? Okay, now, and so the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, this is a man that knew to do good, but chose to do evil. Who is that in the earth? Okay, all right. They're the wicked. Okay, now, they are the wicked one. Okay, the wicked one. In the spirit is Satan. But Satan has a people in the earth. Just like the righteous one is Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, right? Okay, and he has a people in the earth, which is what? The remnant, the hopeful elect of the house of Israel. You know, they're going to submit themselves to God. They're going to resist the devil so that he will flee from them, pursuant to James 4 and 7, right? Okay, uh, that is the right hand side of Yahweh Shem Shah, which is the righteous side. On the left-hand side is the wicked side. At the top is Satan, Shatan, Abaddon. Pursuant to Revelation 9, 11 is his name in the Hebrew, right? Now, he operates in the earth in a people as well. And who are his people that's operating in the earth? Idumia. Let's continue on. Now, okay, now he says, verse 17, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for in that day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. So, you're going to notice through the scriptures as you continue to read, that the teachings and philosophies and sciences, okay, that are of Idumia, contradicts the words of Yahweh Shem and Bashat. So, if you tap into those words, if you begin to live out those uh, those rules, live out those philosophies, you're going to find yourself coming against Yahweh by Hashem and You're going to have a problem on the day of the Lord. Why? Because you will not know these scriptures. 
you will have not transformed your thinking, okay? You will have not begun to change your thinking, returning back to your Bishop Shah, you ain't going to repent. You're also going to say, you're also going to agree, because they teach that the law is not in effect. That's the, that's the furthest thing from the truth. Yahweh B'Shem Rishon says in Matthew 5, 17, I have not come to destroy the law or the prophets. I've come to fulfill it until heaven and earth pass. Not one jot or tittle shall in no wise pass away from this law till all is fulfilled. Has all been fulfilled? Well, then the law is obviously in effect. I'm not just going to speak that. Let's pull that up as well. Let's pull that up. Matthew. And people love to say that Oh, we ain't in the Old Testament no more. Ha uh ha. -uh. We in the New Testament. Okay, well, I'm going to pull this scripture out of the New Testament. Let's pull it out. Matthew 5, 17. <clears throat> Let's pull it out. You don't you agree that Matthew is, 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 is a book of the gospel in the New Testament? Okay, let's see what the New Testament says then. There it is. Matthew 5, 17. Hold on. Let's do something. Let's uh, select red letter, because we know that the words that are written in red are the words that are spoken out of the mouth of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shah HaMashiach. So let's go down, okay? And, um, okay, it's in red. So the Lord spoke this out, out of his own lips. And he says, think not. That I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Verse 18, for verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or tittle shall in no wise pass away from this law, till all be fulfilled. Has all been fulfilled? Has all been fulfilled? Today is November the 3rd. 2022 has all been fulfilled. No. So obviously the law is still in effect. Is not the sun and the moon obeying the laws set forth, their commandments set forth in their gates by Yahweh B'Shem B'Shah? Are they not physically still here? Is not the sun physically still here warming the earth and bringing light upon the earth? Okay. Is not the moon the lesser light at night? Okay. In the darkness. Slaki, should I say. Yes. So we can we can attest that the law is still in effect. Let's continue on. Let's continue on. Um, now, let's go back. Now, okay, Genesis two seventeen. But of but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in that day that thou shalt eat of it, thou shalt surely die. Right now. Verse 18, and the Lord Power said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a help meet for him. Okay? Now, and as you can see there in verse 19, And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. Verse 20, and Adam gave names to all the cattle and all the fowls of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helpmate for him. Okay, so, so listen. All the animals that were created, they were created man and, male and female. That way they had, they had uh, you know, you had, a, you had a, a male elephant and a female elephant. At least those, when he, they were made, that was balanced, okay. Right, and also they could go into the earth and subdue the earth. Okay, now, but for Adam, he sits there by himself. Okay, he do, he can't go into the to the uh, uh, into the earth and subdue the earth. How can he replenish the earth by creating offspring by having children when it's just him? Okay, let's continue on. Verse 21, and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead of, instead thereof. Now, what that is signifying, remember, many things that you read in the Torah are going to be symbolic. What that means is that woman came out of his loins, out of his lineage, out of his bloodline is what it means, okay? 
Now let's continue. Verse 22. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her to the man. Okay, so the man was here first, which is Adam. Okay, now let's continue on. Then we'll get back to where we were in Genesis 3. Okay, now. Verse 23, and Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Okay, now. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall become one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Why were they not ashamed? Because they had not fallen from grace. Okay, we know that the definition by of sin, 1 John 3 and 4 says what? Whosoever committed sin also transgresses the law, for sin is transgression of the law. Now, let's bring that scripture up as well, because we're going to tie it in. We're going to tie it in the Genesis chapter 3, and we're going to prove to you and show you through scripture that the woman was in the transgression. So if the woman is the lawbreaker, okay, and, it, and, and if Sirach 25, 24 says, Of the woman came the beginning of sin, through her we all die, then that's the last person that I'm going to listen to on this earth is her. She is, she, she goes, if you're listening to her words and, and partake of what's coming out of her mouth, guess what? You're going to have some problems. Okay, not just on the day of the Lord, you're going to have problems, period, because you're not going to be able to understand the knowledge of the truth according to the truth. You're going to have a set of commandments of men and some fables, which is not sound doctrine. Okay, now, let's continue on. Now, here we go. <clears throat> All right, now, as you can see, and they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed because they didn't know anything about that. Like, that information hasn't, you know, the, the, the feeling that we experience as we grow older about seeing someone or something like that, you know, things like that. They, they had not known anything about that, okay, because they had not uh, transgressed those laws, okay. Uh, let's bring up First John 3 and 4, as I stated. I'll get a little bit deeper into it there. First John 3 and 4. First John 3 and 4, and it reads... Lucky. It comes up. <laughs> First John 3 and 4 says, Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. In Matthew 5 17, the Lord says, I have not come to destroy the law, I've come to fulfill it. Okay? So as you can see there, who whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is transgression of the law. Now, let's return back. Because we need to, I want to go there so I can prove that. Let's go to Genesis chapter 3. The fall of man. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, has God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree in the garden. Now we know that the law that was in the garden says, You could eat of any tree in the garden, right? Remember we covered that scripture in Genesis chapter 2? But do not eat of the tree that is in the center of the garden. This tree is called the tree of knowledge of good and evil. See, it's kind of like this. If you don't know anything, you don't know that anything is evil, okay, you're not going to inquire of that. You're not going to venture out and try to figure that one out and try to see what's behind this rock. I want to know what's behind that door. If you didn't know it was a door there, you wouldn't be trying to get over there to see what's behind the door. But once the serpent introduced this method of thinking into Eve's thinking, uh, into her mind or into her brain, okay, or into her mind, that's her heart, then she began to try to reason and try to figure it out. Okay, she was already going off because they already had laws already. The laws that was in the Garden of Eden was you can consume of any tree that is in the garden. Let's go back and pull that up once again. Let's go back. Because I don't want you to miss this. Okay, let's go back. Let's go back. And we're going to need to go to Genesis 2. Next chapter. I think we were at the 
15th verse this one. Okay, all right, now watch this. Okay, verse 15. And the Lord power took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and keep it. Okay, now, verse 16. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may as freely eat. Okay, look at it. Verse 17. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in that day that thou eatest of it thereof, thou shalt surely die. Okay. All right. Now, that's the commandment of the garden. That's the commandment of the church of the house of Israel. Okay? That's the commandment. In other words, in other words, we are to cleave unto the Lord our God. Uh, where is that at? Uh, Joshua 23 and 8. Give me just a second. Let me pull it up. Joshua 23 and 8. There it is. But cleave unto the Lord your God as you have done unto this day. Okay. So we are to keep the laws, statutes, commandments, and ordinances of our power. Okay. And those laws are also commandments which are also found in scriptures. John 14, 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. Okay. All right. Psalm 119, 104. Through thy precepts I gain understanding, therefore I hate every false way. So our precepts, our scriptures, our commandments given to the children of Israel are part of the covenant agreement between the house of Israel and our power, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. His name is Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Yahweh established the word, okay? And Yahweh Shai, Lord and Savior, is carrying it out. Yahweh's name, my father, I created in ancient Hebrew. Yah means he. He is. Hawa means he to be. He exists. Bahashem in the name of Yahweh Shai, the name of our Lord and Savior in ancient Hebrew. Yah means he is. Yahweh Shai means our salvation, our deliverer. Okay. Now, let's continue on. <clears throat> now, as you can see here, let's go back. Now, let's go back to Genesis chapter 3. Uh-oh. That's right. Now, the fall of man. Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God hath made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Now, we just, we don't, we don't need to revisit that. Because we saw, we read that in Genesis chapter 2. You may freely eat of any tree that is in the garden. That is in the garden. That is in the church. The remnant, the hopeful elect of the house of Israel. A tree is a man, right? The Lord says, I am the vine, ye are the branches. <laughs> okay? Now, he says, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat of. Why? He knows to do good, right? But he chose to do evil. Right? Okay, now. So he knows to do good, but he chose to come against the Lord. So he's not agree with these scriptures. Okay? And they have created many idols. Okay? Um, the false religion, Christianity. Christianity says, this and that Christianity comes out of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Right? The tree of knowledge of good and evil has produced Christianity. Okay? Now, watch this. The Christianity says the law is not in effect. But we prove according to scripture, Matthew 5, 17, where the Lord says, I have not come to destroy the law. So what's up with that? Now somebody lying. And we know that the scripture tells us in Psalm 58 and 3, the wicked are estranged from the womb, speaking lies. For as soon as they be born, they begin speaking lies. Who is the wicked? Malachi 1 and 4. Let's get it. Let's 
let's get it. Let's get it. Whereas Edom says, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus said the Lord, power of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down. And they shall call them the border of wickedness. And the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. I say what? Remember remember the scripture he says. For the day that you eat of eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall die. Now watch this here. <laughs> Hold on. Watch this. We're going to tie it in. Watch this. Hebrews 12, 16 and 17. These are now Hebrews 12, 16 and 17 is the same people spoken of in Malachi 1 and 4, which are the same people that's that cunning sort of serpent, which are the same people who represent the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Okay? Let's go. Same people. He says one now. What has been should be again, but there's nothing new under the sun rough and paraphrasing. Okay, it was like that then, and it's like that now. What's changing? Malachi 3.6, the Lord says, I am the Lord thy God. I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. And for somebody that says, well, that's the Old Testament. Okay, let's hit it in the new. Hebrews 13 and 8, Yahweh Mashiach says, I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. So nothing's changing. Nothing's changing. Okay? Hebrews 12.16 not, what, what's changing? Ain't nothing changing. Ain't nothing changing. Now you can change. And if you change, and you go back on the word of Yahweh by Shem and Shah, then be back to Ezekiel 14 and 9. <laughs> the prophet has been deceived and spoken a thing. I, the Lord, has deceived that prophet. I said, what? That's where we started. Let's continue on. Hebrews 12, 16. Hebrews 12, 16 says, Unless there be any fornicator or profane person as Isashiwa, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright, for ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. Now, in order for us to live okay, in the spirit, and live forever with Yahweh Hashem and Shai, as the whole elect of the house of Israel, our sins must be blotted out, right? <laughs> right? And if our sins are pl blotted out, then we have received repentance, right? Well, according to the scripture, he can't even repent. Dang. He can't repent? Nope. You see it there? For we know that afterward, when he would have inherited blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance. His sins cannot be blotted out. Now why can't his sins be blotted out? Because he was created to be the wicked. That's why. Hence Malachi 1 and 4. Remember he says in the scripture, Lord, Lord, we are impoverished. I know we will build up the desert place. The Lord says you will build, but I will throw down. Now what's the desert place? Is not Babylon the Great, which is called America, the wilderness or a desolate place? Is not Yahweh Shemir Bashai going to have the nuclear missiles come down on Babylon the Great and destroy it? So he says you will build up. Is not America built right now? It's falling apart. But is it built? Yes. Is it not going to be thrown down? Yes. That's a prophecy that is set to come to pass. And that's what, what most people refer to as World War III. Which is already in uptake right now. Now let's go back and let's continue out. Okay, now. Let's go back. I just want to bring that out. Now. Let's go back a little further here. Now. Let's go back to Genesis 3 again. Uh oh, sloppy. Genesis 3. Okay, let's go back. Fall of man. Now, where were, where were we? Okay, now. Let's go back. 
Genesis 3 and 1. I'm going to try to read all the way through this time. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. And subtle means cunning. Okay, that's what it means, cunning, okay? Trickster, i.e. sneak in the grass, okay? Uh, uh, throw the big and hide the hand. Uh, uh, say one thing and do another. Yeah, there you go. Uh, just put that into your mindset and way of thinking and form of thinking, okay? Now, the serpent was more so than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said ye shall not eat of every tree in the garden? Now, with a question like that, that's a person that's trying to trip you up, okay? That's a person that's trying to knock you off course because your power... Yahweh by Shem has already said in Genesis 2 that you can eat of any tree that is in the garden. Now, wait a minute. Herb, garden means church. Garden means assembly. Garden means congregation. Also referring to the to the remnant. Also referring to the kings and priests and governors that will help, that will rule as joint heirs to the throne of Yahweh Shai. Right? Okay. Let's continue. And the woman said... Unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Verse 2. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, our power hath says, You shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Alright? Now watch this. Pay very close attention. This is the reason why a woman cannot teach or preach. Just, just watch it very carefully. Just listen. I'm going to... Go as slow as I can without taking too much excessive time with it. All right, now, verse four, and the serpent said unto the woman, and the serpent said unto the woman, "Ye shall not surely die." Well, now, wait a minute. Er, our Father, our Creator says, "You can eat of any tree that is in the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you should not eat it, because when you eat it." Or touch it, eat it, or touch it, ye shall die. Now the serpent then came along and started talking to Eve. Eve don't know the serpent from a from a damn can of paint. She ain't never met this one before. She don't know nothing about this 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 man. She don't know nothing. But since the man is talking to her, introducing some some sly thinking into her thought pattern, now she's entertaining that thought. That's where she's going off at. If my mom, if my, hold on, let's go back. If my dad tell me, hey, you come outside today, I want you to rig up them leaves over there and see this, um, see this stack of wood over here? Don't, don't touch this stack of wood. Then a man going to pull up outside my house and ask where my dad was. I said, my dad went someplace. He'd be back in a little bit. And he would say, well, look at him. Well, what you got to do? He, and I said, well, my dad told me, because that's my dad. My dad tell me. The, the rake up these leaves and don't touch the wood over there, okay? But then the man to me, oh, you go ahead and touch that wood. Ain't nothing wrong with that wood. I, I didn't talk to your dad about that wood there. Now, my question to you is this. Should I go over there and touch the wood when my own daddy doesn't tell me not to touch the wood? Hell no. I don't know that man. He might know my daddy, but I don't know him. I mean, what am I going to do? Touch it and then, then when my daddy get home, heck on the belt. See? <laughs> See? And now, let's continue. I just want to go there. Uh, so you can uh, get it a little easier for those of you who are having a little problems understanding. Now. Okay, now. Uh, okay, let's go back up here. And the woman said to the serpent, verse 2. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Okay. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Okay? Now, Genesis 3 and 4. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye, ye shall not surely die. Now Eve start thinking. See? Alright, let's continue on. 5. For God does know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and you and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Now watch this. Now, first of all, before we even go any further now, 
For God does know that in the day ye eat thereof. Uh, where the hell that come from? And watch Eve listen to the serpent that she knew nothing of. And she went about in her own form of thinking. And what she was thinking about is not according to scripture. Let's, let's keep on reading. Let's keep on reading. Let's blow it up a little bit more. Verse 5. For God does know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Let me ask you a question. Right quick. As you grew up, uh, as you grew up, graduated out of middle school, high school, are not there some things that you wish you had never known about? Think about it now. Are there not are, are, are there activities or uh, products or services that you came to the knowledge of that you wish you had never known anything about? See, and if you answered yes, then now you can begin to understand. <laughs> so it's kind of like this. It's like my dad used to say, "No news is good news." If you don't tell me about that, then that won't affect me and I ain't got to worry about it and I ain't got to deal with it and I ain't got to deal with none of them people that deal with it or do it or nothing. I ain't even be around them people, you know. I'm not a thief. So if I'm not a thief, am I going to hang with thieves? Hell no. <laughs> okay, so if, if that don't have nothing to do with me, I'm not going to be interested in it. I ain't going to know nothing about it. I ain't going to be around none of them people. I ain't, none of that, see. Let's continue on. I just want to put that in your thought pattern as well. Now. Here we go. Verse 5. But God does know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Now watch verse 6. Watch it now. Pay attention. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, stop. How in the hell did she get that out of that? How? How? Because she wanted to be as wise as God. See, that goes back to Isaiah 14. Okay, we can cover that as well. Let's, let's restate the scripture. John 3, 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, and she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Now, how in the hell did she get that out of that? You tell me that. Uh, I'll wait. I'll wait. <laughs> how, how? You know, for some people, if they don't know something about something, it will never be able to affect them. But once they know about it, and y'all have y'all know people, y'all know people, and y'all wear people like that. Oh, I tell you, so-and-so-and-so and so and so should have never moved over there across that street. Because now look at them. They all mess up. Yeah. Yeah. But if he, if so-and-so would have stick to what to stick to what, what, what they had set out to do, they would have never been in that mess. You're right. Now they're in the mess. They can't seem to get out the mess. Yeah. The same scenario. Same scenario. Okay. Now let's continue on. Verse 7, and the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. Remember in the end of Genesis chapter 2, they did not know they were naked, and they were not ashamed. Why? Because they had not committed a sin. They had not transgressed the law. Once they transgressed the law, now they know they done done wrong. See? All right, now. And the eyes of them were both open, and they knew they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Verse 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Okay, in the cool of the day. When does it get cool? The evening, right? Which is a brand new day, right? Now, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he says, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Now, I just want to think ahead now. Let, let's, let's go here. Example. Like the same example I used earlier. My dad told me not to touch the wood. If I listen to man and move the wood, then when my daddy come, my daddy already see the, move, the wood done move. 
And he looking for me. Hey, where you at, bro? What's up, Pop? Hey, who touched this wood? I'm either on the run. I'm either getting ready to come up with some kind of excuse. <laughs> something. You see what I mean? And that's what is happening here in Genesis chapter 3. Okay? So, so Yahweh and Shemem Shah already knew he had done wrong because the only way we would know, the only way we would be afraid of him, the only way we knew we were naked, the only way we are going to have him is if we had tapped into the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Period. That's the only way. I'm not going to say the only way, but the way things were set up. Yahweh Shem Shah already knew what we had done. Okay, let's continue on. Which he wrote the word that it would happen this way anyway. But I'm just just, just going through that. Now. Uh, verse 11. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Has thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman who you gave to, be, to me to be with she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. Now, we know that First Timothy chapter 2 says it was a woman that was in the transgression, right? Okay, Adam was not deceived, okay? But we also find out in Genesis chapter 2 that when a, when a woman comes out of a man and marries her husband, they become one flesh. So if the woman is in the wrong, then the man is in the wrong too because they're one flesh now. But Adam himself, as a man, was not deceived. Okay, but the woman was in a transgression. Okay, I hope you can receive that. Now, and the man said, verse 12, the man said, the woman whom you gave me to be with, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. Now, that's a cop-out you didn't heard before, have you not? You heard that cop-out before? You know, you doing your thing, okay? But because the person you with doesn't mess up and somebody on your tail now coming at you about it, now you won't push the blame. Oh, it wasn't me. No, see, I was doing what I was supposed to be doing, but then somebody else come. No, it was them and they. And they what? <laughs> somebody copping out. Somebody don't want to get it. That's what that is. Now, let's continue on. <coughs> now, verse 13. And the Lord God has said unto the woman, What is this you have done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. If she had listened to the laws, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, and stay away from the tree of knowledge, good and evil, wouldn't be in the spot. Right? That's where we come to um, uh, Sirach 25, 24. Of the woman came the beginning of sin through how we all die. Yeah, because she, she was entertaining that thought. Coming to her from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, okay? And that thought was doubting. She was doubting the law of our power. Now, she, what she, she, what, what she ended up doing, she listened to a man. Hold on. She listened to a mortal and didn't listen to an immortal. Who in the hell? Where did they do that at? Come on now. <laughs> Come on now. Let's continue on. Verse... 14. And the word beguile means really, uh, let's look it up right quick. Word beguile. Let's read that. Uh, let's look it up. Word beguile. Comes from the Hebrew. Strong's H, 5377. Nasha. Nasha. Okay. And it means to lead astray. Okay. So the serpent came to her with that conversation, introduced doubt into her thinking and wavering into her thinking pattern, and she was led astray to do something evil, which she was not commanded to do in the first place. Seduce. 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 Beguile, deceive greatly, utterly. Let's catch a little bit more. To beguile, deceive, to be beguiled, to deceive. Catch a little more. Okay. I think that's all we're going to get there. Come deceitfully upon them. Let death beguile them. Now, let's go back. Okay, let's go back again. Close tools. Now, let's pull it up again. Okay, now. Um, okay, now. 
verse 14. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon that belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of thy life. That word dust is in reference to confusion. That's why to this day they can't understand the scripture. They have no clue. They can't write the divide the word of truth. They can't understand the scriptures because Psalm 147, 19 tells us he showeth his word unto Jacob, his judgments and statutes unto Israel. He has never dealt so with any other nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Okay, because the spirit of life had not entered back into us at that moment. Okay. Okay, so we, we didn't know who we are. We didn't know whose we are. We didn't know any of this until Yahweh Shai released the seals thereof as a book. Then we can understand the book. Okay. Well, by, with the help of the Holy Spirit, of course. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you're not going to be in the standards. Period. Okay, now. Let's continue on. Um, verse 15. And I will put enmity. Enmity means hatred. And I will put enmity... Between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and it shall bruise thy heel. I will put enmity between thee and the woman. Who is thee and the woman? Thee is the serpent. Okay. And as you can see in the curse of Deuteronomy 28, 15 through 68, does not Idumia have hatred toward the children of Israel right now? Yes. Are they not killing us in the streets left and right? Yes. That's Slaki. Smiting us in the streets left and right? Yes. Okay. They don't even want us. When they, when they, went, into the, when they went into the Torah and translated from Hebrew to Greek, <laughs> from Hebrew into Greek, into English, they changed the names of our Father and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh and they put God and Jesus in there. Why? Because as long as we call them the wrong name, we could never be saved. See? So they hate us. Uh, also, uh, Genesis 27, 38, 39, 40, and 41. Let's go there as well. Okay. Genesis. I need to plug up right quick because I'm about to run out of power. Genesis 27. Uh oh. 38, I believe. It's going to say it here as well. Okay, what I just said, smite us. It's going to say it here as well. Let's get it. Okay. Let's start at Genesis 27, 38. And in Sashawa, okay, that means wasted away is he in Hebrew, okay. And in Sashawa said unto his father, Have thou but one blessing, my father, bless me, even me also, O my father. And in Sashawa lifted up his voice and wept like, Okay, he lifted up his voice to a high pitch and wept, which is cry. All right, let's continue. Verse 39. And Isaac said to his father, flock it. And Isaac, his father, answered him and said, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and the dew of heaven from above. Okay, are they not ruling in all the high places right now? Okay, all right. Even somebody said, well, what about Barack Obama? He's a so-called black man incorrect. Okay, his father is, uh, is, is Kenyan. Okay, his father is Kenyan. So we know that pursuit of the Numbers chapter 1 verse 18 that our lineage is determined by the seed of our father. Okay, so his father is a Kenyan which is a Hamite. So he's a Hamite. He's not an Israelite. Okay, now, what, what you got for me next? Okay, so they're ruling in all the high places. And every time we need anything according to those curses, we got to go to Isashua to get it. Period. Let's continue on. Genesis um, 27 and 40. And by the sword you shall live and shall serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass when thou hast... When thou, let's start again. And by the sword shall thou live and serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion. And thou shalt break his yoke off the neck. Now it shall come to pass that after they have had the dominion. Who's in rulership right now? It's Sashua, right? Edom, right? Idumia, right? But watch this. He says, And it shall come to pass that after, that when thou shalt have the dominion, which is now, that thou shalt break the yoke off of thy neck. So we know that in the kingdom, who's going to be ruling in the kingdom? 
the sons of our power, which is joint heirs to the throne of Yahweh Shai. Right? Sirach 10 and 8. Do the unrighteous dealings. Riches. Hold on, let's get it. We'll get it. We'll get it. Slop. Back. I need to plug up right now. Okay, do the unrighteous dealings, injuries, and riches got by deceit. The kingdom is translated from one people unto another. Right? Right. Let's go plug up. Okay. Um let's let's cover this last scripture and then we'll go there. Okay. Um and verse twenty uh, Genesis twenty seven verse forty one and Isashua hated and Sashua hated and Sashua hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Isashua said in his heart, The days of mourning for my father are at hand, then I will slay my brother Jacob. Let's go back. And Isashua hated. Okay. And Isashua hated Jacob. These are twins. One twin hates the other. Okay, well, wait a minute. Let's go back. Didn't you how about Shemim Shah said that in Genesis chapter 3? And I will put enmity between thee and thy woman's seed. Let's go back. Let's get it. Genesis. That's a prophecy. That's happening now. And it's been happening. All throughout our captivity, our slavery, it's been happening. Genesis 3. I think maybe 16 first, maybe. Okay. There it is right there. And I, who is I? Yahweh by Hashem Yavashah. And I will put enmity between thee... The seed of the serpent, Isashiwa, and thy woman's seed. And the woman, the seed of thy woman. Hold on, let's say it again. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman. Okay? And between thy seed. So the serpent is the seed of Satan in the earth. Malachi 1 4. You shall be called the border of wickedness, right? That's the left hand side. Okay? The wicked side. Between, okay, and I will put enmity, hatred between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. That's Genesis 27, 41. The days of mourning for my father are at hand, then I will slay my brother Jacob. This can't get no, this, this, I can't make this no easier. I, I can't do it. Okay, so you see, Yahweh Shimon Shai spoke the prophecy here in Genesis 3, 15. And then it comes to pass, Genesis 27, 40, 27 and 40, you heard the thought of Isashua, okay? And now it's happening now from that point on in Genesis 27, uh, 41, up until November 3rd, 2022, it's been happening. Jeremiah 1 and 12, for thou hast well seen, he shall hasten his word to perform it. Hasten means watch over. So he's going to cause each and every one of these prophecies to come to pass. Period. Let's continue on. Now. All right. Verse 16. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. And in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. And they shall slock it. And thy desire shall be to thy husband. And he shall rule over thee. Okay. Now that has not been happening now for some time. But I bet you one thing it would be that we in the kingdom. Why? 1 Corinthians 14, 40 says, Let all things be done decently and in order. It will be in order in the kingdom. Period. Why? Because these laws, statutes, commandments, and ordinances will be in our inward parts. We will know to go off. We will be able to sin because the Lord says He will remember our sin no more. So if He says He will remember our sin anymore, and He says, if He says He will remember our sin, He will no longer remember our sin, then we ain't going to be able to sin. He wants to be visited with that again. Let's continue on. Let's lock it for my choice of words. Now, so as you can see there, um, and it continues on in Genesis chapter 3. So as you can see there, this is the reason. Let's uh, pull up. Let's go to the Apocrypha, which we did cover this yesterday. Let's go to the Apocrypha. And the Apocrypha speaks to Rock 25, 24. 
That's the book of Ecclesiastes. Cuss. Let's get it. And we're going to get a few more of the scriptures as well. Oh, no. Let's go here. Because it just don't want to come up all the time. So, rock. So, rock. 25. Verse 24. And for those of you who may not agree that the 14 hidden books of the prophets are part of the Bible, this scripture that I'm preparing to read is going to tie directly in with Genesis chapter 3. So rock 25, 24, of the woman came the beginning of sin, through her we all die. Remember 1 Timothy chapter 2 says, Adam was not deceived, it was the woman that was in transgression. Why? Not keeping the laws. Begin to doubt the law of Yahweh, but remember, shall I listen to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? That's how, that's, that's when we begin to die. Because he says, if you eat, the day you eat thereof from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, then you shall surely die. And the serpent came along and said, what he, what the Lord said, what, what God said, oh, you ain't going to die. You, you believe that, though? You ain't going to die. And we've been dying ever since. All right, let's go. Let's move on. Dying into the flesh, in the flesh, that is. Now, um, let's go back. Let's also get one more precept, and then we're going to begin to close out. Uh, let's also get some rock. 2614 while I'm at it. Sarak 2614. Let's get it. Sarak 2614. A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord, and there is nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed. So according to this scripture, a woman that is being silent and loving is a gift and the Lord said, that's a well-instructed mind. So what's up with these women pastors? Who do they work for? She ain't the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. What God is that? All other gods come under who? Abaddon, Shaitan, or Satan. Okay, that's the tree, which is the seed of the serpent, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. See how off these people really are? Okay. Let's continue on and close out. Let's get Revelation um, 2 and 20 right quick. Uh, in fact, let's go somewhere else. Give me a second. Let's lock it up. Give me a second. Um, let's go to, um, I didn't want this to be a long lesson, but I want to cover everything that needs to be covered. Because uh, I don't necessarily like to do three and four videos to one topic. Not when I can just cover it all. So I know our time is getting a little ahead of us or getting away from us, but I'm going to cover everything, okay? Because in the future, um, soon and very soon, we're going to have more and more Israelites waking up to the knowledge of the truth. And these videos, as long as this channel is up and operating, these videos will still be circulating throughout the earth. So you might be aware of this knowledge, and you might understand this, okay? But to them, they're hearing it for the very first time. Okay, so let's continue on. Uh, two more precepts. Let's go to Numbers chapter 12 right quick. And then we're going to close out Revelation 2 and 20. Then we'll be done. Um, let's go to Numbers chapter 12. Now, in Numbers chapter 12, <clears throat> there was conversation um, with Miriam, which is Moses' sister, okay, and Aaron. Okay, I'll just give you the backdrop. And Miriam, which is a woman, uh, was was convinced that our father, Yahweh B'Shem Yavashah, was dealing with her. Okay, like these women pastors. See, these women pastors like to say that they are, uh, they like to say that the Lord is dealing with, with them. Okay, and uh, what the Lord is putting on their heart might be different from what he's putting on somebody else's heart, and they say they feel persecution. Yeah. Okay, now, let, let now. Now, we're going to go here now. We're going to read this in Numbers chapter 12, okay? Um, I don't want to read the entire chapter, but I'll read as much as I need to to convey the message to you. And here we go. And it is entitled, The Murmuring of Miriam and Aaron. Okay, Numbers 12 and 1. And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. Verse 2. And they said, Hath... The, and they is Miriam and Aaron now. Remember that now. Aaron, Marion and Aaron now. Okay? Now, 
And they said, Had the Lord indeed only spoken by Moses? Has he not spoken also by us? And the Lord power heard it. Verse 3. Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. Verse 4. And the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses, and unto Aaron, and unto Miriam, Come out, ye three, unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And they three came out. Verse 5. And the Lord came down in the pillar of the cloud. That's a chariot. The Lord power came down in the pillar of the cloud, and stood in the door of the tabernacle, and called Aaron and Miriam, and they both came forth. Verse 6. And he said, Hear now my words. This is the Lord power speaking. Okay, now, if there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him, H-I-M, in a vision. Verse 6, and he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. Verse 7. My servant Moses is not so who is faithful in all mine house. Verse 8. With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently and not in dark speeches, and the similitude of law power shall be he behold. Wherefore, then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? Watch this, verse 9. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and he departed. Verse 10. And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle, and behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. <laughs> And Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. Now, we know that leprosy is uncleanness. Who else is leprous in the earth right now? Isashua. <laughs> right? The people whom the Lord has indignation forever. The people who sought repentance carefully with tears, Hebrews 12, 16, and 17, and didn't find it. They leprous too now. The seed of the serpent, leprous. Come on now. Okay, now. Verse 11. And Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us wherein we have done foolishly and wherein we have sinned. So to say that Yahweh Shemir Bashah is dealing with a woman, Miriam, is doing foolishly. He says, lay not the sin upon us wherein we have done foolishly. And where we have sinned. So first Corinthians uh it's like it. First John three and four tells us what? Whosoever committed sin also transgressed the law. The law already says in all the scriptures in these two videos that women are not permitted to speak in the church. So why in the hell is they be trying to be pastors? Let's continue on. I don't think I need to say any more. Let's go back to verse 12. Let her not be as one dead. What? Let her not be as one dead. So the leprous people, which is the Sashua, are the people who can't see, who cannot, who cannot uh, repent, pursuant to Hebrews 12, 16, and 17. Also, the same people, Malachi 1, 4, that says, we are impoverished, we will build up the desert places. The Lord says, you will build up, but I will throw down. You shall be called a territory witness. These are the same people, leprous. And the Lord had made Miriam leprous. Mm -mm -mm. Let's continue on. We learn from these scriptures. Uh, Psalm 119, 104. Through thy precepts I gain understanding. Therefore I hate every false way. And this here is false. This is an incorrect way. It is out of order. It is confusion. Now, let's go. Um, <clears throat> verse 12. Let her not be as one dead, of whom the flesh is half consumed when he cometh out of the mother's womb. Isashua. Leprous. For the wickedness. Let's continue on. 
And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, Hear her now, O father, I beseech thee. And the Lord said unto Moses, If her father had but spit in her face, should she not be ashamed seven days? Let her be shut out from the camp seven days, and after that let her be received in again. Verse 15, And Miriam was shut out of the camp for seven days, and the people journeyed not until Miriam was brought in again. So the camp didn't move. Why? Because that's an Israelite out there. But that Israelite doesn't have the safety and the security of the other Israelites because she is outside the camp. Period. You know, like they always say, there's safety in numbers. Okay, the nation of Israel is over here, but she on the other side of the camp. She out there all by herself. She got to quote unquote fend for herself and feed herself. Huh? Let's continue on. Verse 16, and afterward the people removed Hezarus and pitched in the wilderness of Paran. So as you can see, Yahweh Shem Shah is not pleased with a woman trying to say that he's dealing with a woman for the nation of Israel. That is not so. Okay. Let's close out with Revelation 2 and 20. Um, and this is also to remember when we look at the word beguile. Okay. It said beguile. It said deceive and it also said seduce, right? Okay, let's look at it. You're going to see this word again in this scripture as well. Now, another reason why I wanted, why I wanted to come, come across this video is because there are people who are watching Great Millstone. Okay? Even women and these false prophets. They are going to select and choose what they want to put into their doctrine. They're going to pull some stuff from Great Millstone and then they're going to add in the rest of the stuff, which is not according to Scripture. That is about to be going rampant every day now. You look on YouTube, these TikTok videos, you're going to start seeing more and more and more of these things. And you're going to have to be able to test the spirits by the spirit. For not every spirit is of me, First John 4 and 1. You're going to have to know, okay? Because if you know, if you don't know and you follow in or start listening or subscribe to people and start getting their little videos here and there, you're going to be led astray. This is seduction. Now, let's close out. Um, this is a, a, a precept for teaching. But I just want to read it because a lot of people don't even know the scriptures in here. Okay, now, let's go. Revelation 2.20. Let's go back up. Okay. It says, message to Theoc Ty. Tyatero. Okay, now. Um, let's start at Revelation 2.18. And unto the angel of the church of Tiatra write, These things saith the Son of the Most High, the Son of our power, who has his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. Okay, we know we're talking about Yahweh Shai, pursuant to Daniel 10 and 6 and Revelation 1, 14 and 15. Now, he said, it's verse 19, I know thy works and charity and service and faith and thy patience and thy works and the last to be more than the first. Verse 20, notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Verse 21. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her will into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. Verse 23, And I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. Okay. So as you can see there, the Al-Bashim Mashiach is not pleased with these quote-unquote women pastors, okay? I give you all the scripture necessary to prove all that I have stated. And Yahweh Bashim Mashiach says that women are to be silent in the churches, okay? If they have a question, have ask their husbands at home. If you're not married, okay, to a, uh, 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 a Hebrew is like brother or whatnot, then what you need to do is you need to tune in to our videos 
subscribe so that you can be edified. Because the word husband means, uh, let's let's look it up right quick. I don't want to say exactly what it means. Uh, give me just a second. I think it means supplanter. Let's look up right quick, husband. Uh, let's go to that scripture. First Corinthians. Oh no, that's wrong. First Corinthians, fourteen thirty-four. So whoever's teaching you the scriptures, whoever's breaking it down, whoever's bringing you understanding, of course, uh, 1434, let's get it right quick. Because a lot of people, you know, a lot of us are under Christianity um, still, and a lot of us came out of Christianity, and, we just, and, they, and they just have it all wrong and mixed up with what the husband really is. Now, let's get it here. Um, let your women, 1 Corinthians 1434, let your women keep silence in the church, but it's not permitted for them to speak. If they... But they are commanded to be under obedience, as also said the law, which is spoken of in First Corinthians chapter eleven. Now, and if they will learn anything at home, let them ask their husbands at home. Let's look up the word husbands and we'll quote. I don't want you to take my word for it. I want you to see exactly what this word means. Okay, husbands come from the Greek. Strong's G four thirty five, aner, aner. A man, fellow husband, man, sir. With reference to sex of a male of a husband or of a betrothed or future husband, the word betrothed is references being engaged to, or is already set up and arranged married to be married to. Um, any male. Used generically in a group of both men and women. Um, let's look up the root word. Okay. Um, because the word husband comes from husband men. Okay. And Yahweh is our husband men. Okay. He protects us. He leads us. He guides us. He helps us to understand scripture by way of his spirit. He provides for us. Philippians 4.19. Um, my God shall follow my needs according to his riches and glory. Okay. Man faced human being. Uh, human being, certain man. Okay, look at this. Of human being, whether uh, of human being, whether male or female. That's weird, like that. <laughs> but anyway, um, of a human being, whether male. Okay. Um, generically to gene generically to include all human individuals. To distinguish man from being of, from beings of a different order, okay. Um, of the angels, see that the angels, which are the righteous angels, which are are are, are tied up and trapped in chains of darkness upon the earth. That's the hope elect of the house of Israel, the remnant, okay. Um, hmm. With reference to twofold nature of a man, body, and soul, your soul is also your spirit, man. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. I want to get. Let's let's look up the word husband, man. Um, give me a second. We about to close out. I just want to. I don't like to leave stuff un incomplete. Okay, look at that. John 15 and 1 says, <clears throat> Yahweh shall is the vine, the fathers are the branches. Did we say that early in the lesson? I am the vine, and ye are the branches. Now, John 15 and 1 says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husband, men. Right? Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that bears fruit, he purges it, that he, it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. Okay, remember, the servant is not above the master. Now, let's look at the word husband in here, and then we're going to close out. I just, I just wanted to go here. Because some people like to say, well, I ain't got no husband. I ain't got no will. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now, comes from the Greek. 
Strong's G, 1092. Georgas. Georgas. A land worker, a farmer. That's the parable of the seeds. The, the seed that was planted in the good ground, the seed that was planted in the stony ground. Okay? A husbandman, a tiller of the soul, a vine dresser. Remember in Genesis chapter 2, he says that you can eat of any tree that is in the garden. The, those trees were to dress the garden and keep it. That's like a farmer, okay? All right? That's a farmer, okay? So, I mean, now, so, you know, I just want to bring that out. Um, a, a, a husband, a tiller of the soul. Okay, remember, 1 Corinthians 10, 26, Psalm 24 and 1. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Okay, now, all right. And there's some parable stairs you see there as well. So I think we can get the gist of everything. So we know that Ephesians five twenty five and twenty six says we are washed by the washing of the word. By we are, we are wa we are cleansed and baptized by the washing. Of water by the word. So the Holy Spirit helps us to understand the knowledge of the truth according to the truth. And all the other crap that we've been taught all our lives come out of us. And the knowledge of the truth according to scripture goes into us. And helps us to understand the the ways and understanding of Yahweh Bashim and Bishai. I know that lesson is a lot longer than I had wanted it to be. But I definitely wanted to expound in it greater from the video that I did yesterday. Um... The video that I did yesterday is going to be, the link to it is going to be in the description box. But this is the reason why a woman cannot uh, teach the gospel or preach the gospel, you know. Yahweh Shemim Shai dealt with Adam, okay, alright. And Yahweh Shai is the first spirit name and Adam is the first physical name, okay. And then he made the woman, he made the woman, brought the woman out of his bloodline, out of his lineage. And now all of a sudden, she got to understand and anybody never dealt with her. What do you mean? How do you get it? So I was able to prove, pursuant to Numbers chapter 12, that men thought the Lord was dealing with her, and you see what happened to her. <laughs> okay. Now, the camp didn't move for seven days, and then she was let back into camp. I bet she never spoke of that ever again, because she done been down that road, see? So I hope this has been edifying, if it has come to the honor, glory, and power of Yahweh, by Shemir Bashad, by Shemir Kakudash. Double honors to the elders and apostles, faithful servants of great millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect of the house of Israel, tabernacle 